like to give everybody out there listening a very warm White Cat welcome because you're tuned in to the White Cat Outdoors podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's episode 49 of the White Cat Outdoors podcast, and we are another week closer coming up on one year of podcasting. So we really appreciate you guys hanging around with us for this long, and hopefully you stick it out for a lot more episodes to come because we're we're not slowing down. We're the trains leaving the station and we're just trucking right along. So either get on or get out the way. So we got this bitch in cruise control. We ain't stopping. Exactly. So there's Nick. Nick's here. Yep, I'm here. And Tom's here. Hey. All three hosts together. Yeah. Sitting right here talking deer camp stories because it's the deer camp series. And we're going to be talking. We all went up to New York for the New York rifle season opener and... Long guns. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about long long guns. Usually people call like long guns like like flintlocks. Like, really? I thought those were smoke I holes. think they're because like the length of the gun. Yeah. You know. I always consider like a long gun as like a long range rifle. Oh. Wait. Leave in the comments your your thoughts. <laughs> Tom, every time you say that, we don't get any comments. <laughs> we, well, I'm just going to keep don't. saying it. <laughs> Maybe someday yeah. when we actually have more than a dozen people listening, we'll get... Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll just put in the comments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tom's going to have like a bunch of fake accounts. Big fan here. <laughs> All siding. That Tom guy, man. He really knows his stuff. Yeah. Got to get him on there more. Which actually is funny. I say that because we are going to be talking about Tom more, especially tonight, because he's uh, he's the whole reason we were able to talk more deer camp stories. I mean, we could have just talked deer camp because we were all up at camp. I think that's what we should do. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll highlight. And we'll save my story for last because it's the best. It is a good so story. So okay. we'll just we'll, we'll talk to your camp, and then we can go around the horn and tell our hunting stories from the New York opener. Okay. And we'll bring yeah. it right back to you, and you'll tell us what happened with your day. Yeah. So you want me to – But where do you want to start then, Tom? I'll start us off. It was, what, Friday – Friday the 19th, I think. Let me. Yeah, because it started Saturday the 20th. Friday the 19th. You know, you get out of work, 5 o'clock, pack the bags, head up to deer camp. Nick and Frank were actually already there waiting for me and my dad to roll up. Yep, already had the fire going. Nice fire cabin. Ready. Pizza on the table. So get in the camp. Yeah, pizza and wings. Beer was already cold. Yeah. Couldn't ask for a better situation to walk into for deer camp. No. So Bar was open. Bar was open, Shooter's Tavern and, and open grill? 24, yeah, is it, or no, it's Shooter's <laughs> it's bar, bar and Tavern. Yeah, bar yeah, and bar tavern. And ta- it's a bar and a tavern. All in one. <clears throat> Leave in the comments if you... Th- <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a lot of comments on that one. Yeah. Anyway, so we roll up to Shooter's Bar and Tavern about 8 o'clock, pizza on, wings hot, beer cold, chowing down, and putting our nightly plan together. I had this good plan where I was going to hunt my hidden food plot in the morning, and then I was going to sneak up to the field edge for the evening hunt, Um, you know, just bullshitting, talking about God knows what. We actually broke out the old shot bat, which was a shot bat. Tom, what is that? So it was made by a good buddy of ours, Phil Laird, at South Hill Bats, and basically what you have is... A baseball bat, right? It's and a wooden bat, hand wooden turned bat. himself. Yep, got our logo on it, which is pretty sweet. Hand carved himself. Looks awesome. Yeah, this ain't no computer bullshit. This is hand carved. It's Made really impressive. Love. Yeah, yeah, big time. And on the back side of the bat, opposite the logo, there's three little uh, like cup holders about the size of shot glass holders, if you will. Yeah, shot glass holders. There's one, you know, down at the handle, one at the end of the barrel and one right in the middle so basically you put three shot glasses in each little holders fill them with we were doing uh bv toasted caramel and uh jaeger i think there was some fireball they were all really gross think of a think of a shot ski but way cooler yeah because it's a a that's what i'm saying but way cooler yeah so you and your two buddies can all rip shots off the bat and just have a good time and what better way to 
bring in like the first day of deer season then with a shot bat the night before. With your own custom logo. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just because we're White Cat Outdoors that we get custom logos. He does that for anybody. Um, so if you got, you know, an event or you got your own deer camp, uh, you can put whatever you want on the bat. He can do it. Um, get one set up for you guys. He's got, he's going to be doing these for a great Christmas gift as well. Yeah, So definitely. Um, I can actually, I could even just put the link to get one in the uh, podcast in the notes. Bio. Yeah, well, not in our bio, but in the podcast notes. Leave a comment. Notes. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's a really cool idea, especially for guys that like baseball like us, but we're too old to play baseball. So we joined Beer League Softball and uh, we like to hunt and drink. And it was just a perfect little thing to have at camp. Yeah. And, and as Nick had mentioned, it's like it doesn't really even count as doing a shot if you do it no. out of a shot bat. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't even notice that we did shots that night because no. it I was I think I did make bat. that point, didn't I? Yeah. You did. There's a lot of things I don't remember, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently they do count. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, guys. Well, you, even given like the, even though we were doing the shot bat and having a, a grand old time. We, we got up much earlier than we did last year for the first day. We Everyone was out in the woods right Thanks away. Thanks to me. Yeah. Yeah, Tom had coffee brewing. Disgusting. You didn't even have a sip. I know it's disgusting, Tom. Tom, your so. coffee has pulp in it. It's because it's made out of a percolator. You'll have that. It doesn't matter what you make it out of. You have that disgusting. on these big jobs. No. So anyway. Anyway, yeah, drinking, having a good time, doing some shots, eating pie, eating wings, and... uh bar nuts pretzel rods yeah it's, it's a it. good old time bar and tavern everything you could think of for opening night eve just hunting great. edition bush light cans yeah, yeah. everything i think that's what jenny beer the deal. so anyway we get to bed i think uh, actually pretty decently early it was around midnight midnight which is pretty early it for deer camp like one. Any, yeah one. well i think we went into the cabin around midnight but by the time we yeah. actually settled in, settled and, went in and went to bed it was about one so we got a nice three hours of sleep and i'll uh hand it over to either either one of you guys i guess if we're going clockwise counterclockwise i don't care but we'll we'll pick it up three hours later from when we went to bed at 4 a.m all right nick so i rub my eyes to the uh, warm, bitter smell of coffee. Uh, my favorite coffee. Coffee. Uh, so we actually, Tom, I think, did you set an alarm? Yeah. 4 a.m., yeah. Yeah, because I didn't hear the alarm. I Seriously, I did wake up to the smell of coffee um, and feet. But that's just <laughs> it's a small cabin. Parts. It's a small, it's, yeah. Yeah, but it's a small cabin. But anyways, um, I felt pretty good in the morning. A little foggy on where my pants ended up. And if anybody shut Shouldn't the power, say anything about losing your pants in a cabin full of dudes. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what? Sometimes it gets a little too hot. You need to get your pants off. Sometimes. Yeah, I had my uh, thermals on underneath, so three quarter, of course. You don't, want, you don't want thermals all the way down to your ankles. That, but that's a story for another podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, so I wake up. I don't need any coffee. I'm bright eyed, bushy tailed, ready to rock. Um, and I got my traditional stand i go to I, I say opening day gun but pretty much every time i hunt yeah uh sometimes i like to venture away and sit next to frank without telling him that's the uh, best shoot deer over there but i like to stay on my area it uh it's kind of a virgin area i haven't killed over there yet um it's only been about 10 years still haven't so, killed there yeah wounded back when i was about 15 but other than that it's been a curse ever since um, but Trevor anyway, kind of killed in that area, huh? Yeah, Trevor he did. killed in that area. Yeah, but back behind it a little bit. Yeah, that stand that was actually on the—I think it was on the back side. Of I like your how tree. you said it was right in that area because I tried telling you that that stand was hogging my area. <laughs> you walked right into that. It's like an open door. Hook, line, sinker. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm sitting there, and uh, just as the sun's starting to come up, I hear something behind me uh so i i you know do a quick turnaround and i see a, a deer couldn't tell what it was running across the top of the hill which is a good 200 yards i'd say um there's no shooting going on it's way too thick you just kind of see flash of movement that was definitely a deer but because i mean it's the first thing i seen all morning so i got my eyes on it i'm watching it and all of a sudden it kind of hooks down and starts coming down the hill towards me 
So I start getting excited, grab my gun, start following it through, and next thing I know, it's a spike. And uh, haven't gotten a buck on this farm yet, so I'll tell you what, that bu- that spike was in danger, put it that way. <laughs> uh, he started working right in towards me. I had picked out uh, the first lane he was expected to come through uh, that I could shoot, and I'm just kind of following him in my scope. And I, I shoot with both eyes open, uh, and that is kind of important for something like this because – if you close one eye and you're looking through the scope, you kind of lose sight of where you're at, uh, where you're pointing. I don't know if yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you kind of like lose depth perception. Here. Yeah, so I shoot with both eyes open for this reason where I can kind of watch uh, where the deer's coming from while my scope is still pointed where the uh, the the lane is. Now, you're not going to do this for 100 yards like I'm not Sid the Sloth, um, but you can kind of see what's going on as it happens. Um, and basically... The buck was coming through. He had about another 60 yards to cover on the side of the golden rods. And he got behind these two trees. I'm waiting for him to pop out on the other side so I can keep following him to the lane. And he never, never came out. Um, I can't say exactly what happened, but one of two things happened. He either turned and went straight up into the golden rods, which I'm assuming happened because that's where he was. Yeah, or he turned and went up into the golden rods and went across the road. But if he went across the road, there was some yahoo sitting like 20 feet off the road in a blaze orange jumpsuit, and he would have smoked them for sure. So I think he was bedded down in those golden rods. Um, and that was actually the only deer I saw all morning. Pretty slow. Climbed down about 10 o'clock or so, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and uh, went back up to the cabin Got myself some stew, and I guess we'll uh, we'll cut off my morning hunt, and we'll uh, work our way around this table for Frank's morning hunt. Uh, so my morning hunt was like just barely a little bit more exciting than Nick's. I had a little buck come in right at first light, and he he came right into me. I could have smoked him. He was a big old four point. And I had him at 40 yards for like five minutes just standing there eating. Could have laid him down. And Nick was not pleased that I didn't shoot him, but uh, that's the way she goes. I let him walk. And so that was it for probably about an hour-ish. And then uh, probably a half hour, I'd say. And then another deer comes walking down. It's a little little doe. And I let her go, too. She she wasn't a big old meat doe. Wasn't Was not a nanny, so... She got the pass, and then that other little buck was, like, bedded down right behind me, and he took off running, went down towards Nick and Tom's dad, and I don't, he never saw him, but he was headed that direction, and that was basically it for my morning hunt. Uh, climbed down about the same time Nick did, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, on my way back to camp, got stopped by the old uh, DCNR, they are checking licenses and whatnot. And the guy told me he's had not seen a single dead deer all morning, hasn't run into anybody that killed a deer. You know, apparently it was a really slow morning for everybody because I, I thought it was going to be a great morning. The weather was perfect. Wind was nice and calm. It was, it was nice, but it was not yielding deer for anybody, apparently, because that guy hadn't talked to anyone that killed one. So that was the end of the morning hunt. Went back and met up with Nick and had some lunch and hung around, took a nap for the evening. Tom, we've made it to you. How did your morning hunt go? So, like I had mentioned earlier, I decided I was going to hunt my little hidden food plot down in the woods on the tip of the swamp. Man, that thing was like perfectly fertilized. No, no. It was. (laughs) You know? It was perfect, actually. I know two guys that really went to town on fertilizing that by hand. We did a good job. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Anyway, so I get on stand, and the, whoever seeded that food plot distributed the seeds so Pretty evenly. Pretty good at spreading the seed. So evenly. Yeah, it's just a beautiful mixture of clover, brassica, turnips, anything a deer would ever want. And anyway, I'm sitting there, and you know, first light, I'm thinking, okay, something's going to happen. Nothing really happened until about an hour after first light. And I start hearing, you know, that 
working its way across the hill. So I look up, and all I can see is this deer's body, head behind a tree. And I'm like, okay, here we go. It looked like a decent-sized body. So I got my gun rest up, right? Pull the rifle up, and I'm basically right on this tree, just on the right side of this tree, waiting for the deer to step out so I can take a look at him and see what he is. And I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting. And I see the deer's tail flicker. And some of you listeners might not know this, but when a deer's standing still and they flicker their tail, it's a very good indication that they're going to start moving again. So just so- something to look out for. Something to jot down in the notebook. Yeah. So I see his tail flicker. and I'm like, okay, he's getting ready to move. So I squeeze the gun into my shoulder a little bit tighter and, you know, lean into the shooting rail getting good and solid and it makes this god awful clank and click and <laughs> it was loud kind of echoed through the woods and the deer definitely heard it and for whatever reason turned directly at me and just walked straight down the hill at where this noise came from he was coming to investigate what it was and when he got around the tree i seen he was just i think he was a four point not very big but i had him Anywhere from 100 yards to 4 yards, he came right to me, and I watched him go bed down in the swamp. I figured, oh, if he made it to the swamp, there's a good chance he's going to make it through opening day, unless he doesn't do something stupid, like Mm -hmm. leave and cross the road. But anyway, let him go. Again, Nick was not too thrilled that we were passing bucks up. Yeah, Nick was just in a big hurry for everybody else to shoot something. Except him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I was just upset that I didn't have an opportunity to shoot, and everybody else was like, oh, yep, could have shot. Didn't. But it is what it is. It is. Anyway, that was the only deer I saw that morning. And I, I couldn't believe that none of us really saw anything. Cause was I, was I, it like, dad that never. My dad didn't see anything. Yeah, he didn't see a single deer. It felt perfect. You know, it was nice and cold, but it just didn't pan out. Sometimes the deer just aren't ready to die, you know? You know? Anyhow, I hunt till a little after 10, climb down, walk back up to the cabin, and I had some chicken chowder soup, uh, laid down for a little while, quick snooze, read, energized myself, and uh, was ready to get back on stand about 1.30. So, about that time, 1.30 or so, uh, I decided I'm going to head back into the deer woods and i uh looking back should have listened to tom he told me that i should go to the food plot where he was at in the morning um i kind of wanted to shoot our bigger field and the woods um tom said well if i were if you if that's what you want to do then i would go sit by the bean stand which kind of an oxymoron uh kind of feel like our bean stand is kind of like uh, the story of who is it with the beanstalk? Jack. So he got the beanstalk. Yeah, Jack has the with the beans. magical beans. I think Tom's soybeans were magical beans because turns out they're not freaking real. Uh, <laughs> they look was, just like beans. <laughs> there was no beans. They don't um, grow though. The only problem was Jack's beanstalk got really tall. Tom's beanstalk did not grow at all. I think that happened, actually rhymed. I'm pretty proud of that. So what happened was they were so perfect that the deer just mowed them mowed down, them down. <laughs> yeah. before. Anyways, they could so we've got this produce. like this beautiful like five acre food plot of crabgrass because the clover didn't even make it because he sprayed it a second time (laughs) anyways i didn't even plant clover yeah but that's what was in the field yeah beforehand and when and it was starting to come up and then we sprayed it a second time to let the beans flourish and the beans didn't flourish either way we learned don't buy year old seeds it's the it's the reason that they're still for sale because nobody bought them yeah apparently they do this thing where it's called like inoculated beans where they're like Roundup ready and fertilized, and it's what farmers buy. For example. apparently, they work a lot better than <laughs> the, the shit, shit beans you shit. bought. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, so I go to the bean stand. Jack and the beans talk is what I'm going to call it because they're imaginary. Yeah, uh, you and I were hunting almost. We were hunting the same field. I was just yeah 200 yards from you. So I jump up in this stand, spot. and which me and Tom hung this stand. A lot of fun to hang. Um, one of those trees where you climb one tree, 
with your sticks and a few we actually had a few climbing like screwing steps plus some climbing sticks and then you hang the stand in a tree beside it um and so i mean it's a fun stand easy to get into a bitch to hang yeah but anyway so i get in get my excuse me uh get myself all situated and i'm not sitting for more than two minutes and i look over to my right and there's two deer kind of chasing around in the swamp down there um which i mean it's pretty thick through there and i watched them play around in there for a while and then it looked like they just bedded down somewhere over there um and i was like all right perfect like you deer are already up moving around doing their thing this is going to be a perfect little hunt you know we're gonna we're gonna get to push the safety off and pull the trigger tonight and as the time went on i did not see another single deer it became more Uh, apparent that you were not going to get to shoot a deer it was uh, a little frustrating but uh it is what it is still had a good time in the woods always like being in the woods um but it was a pretty slow day for me in general i didn't didn't even have a single opportunity to shoot all day which i was the only person out of the four of us that that happened to but you know sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles other years i shoot in the first hour of opening day so yeah that's the way she goes we sometimes. still got a couple especially months. in rifle season you never know what's gonna happen yeah and i, I mean i still got I a know few exactly months what's gonna happen opening day gun season in pa mm-hmm. oh put the hammer down on a monster when, bark. when yeah. uh we're gonna tom's gonna call a shot at the end of the episode we'll see if it prevails because by the time this episode releases it will have already happened yeah that's true. um so we can all actually we'll all, we'll make predictions for ourselves i like it uh but anyways ain't no guess that's what's going to be uh but anyways yeah so as that story ends i packed up my shit and went back to the cabin he took and, his football and went home yep that's exactly what i did unloaded my gun in the woods of course because i'm not a dingus but uh yeah that's uh that was my even hunt went and drank my sorrows yeah, Nick could have shot a deer if you would have listened to me. Or me. Yeah. Yeah. But Frank wanted me to put spot and stock on a fawn. And okay, I, it wasn't a fawn. But then it, why would you it, say a fawn is sitting over here? 50 I didn't yards. say it was a fawn. I said it was a doe. It's a, a very I said small, a doe. small doe. And it was a small doe. It was bigger than a fawn. Maybe it was a really big fawn. Maybe it was a button buck. It wasn't a button buck. Thousand percent not a button buck. I if got it was a button buck, I would have been putting a sneak. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got a great look at this thing for a very long time. Like, not even two minutes after See, I'm I got not like kill crazy. I still want to shoot a mature animal. Yeah. Unless it's a spike. That's going to get blown. <laughs> but it's going to pew, done. But, uh. See, so, so yeah, I get set up and I wasn't even completely set up and. Deer comes running right behind. Actually, it wasn't running. It was just kind of milling right behind me and laid down about 50 yards straight behind my stand. And I was like, oh, man, Nick, get over here and wax this thing. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm good. And we went back and forth arguing because he was getting irritated with everybody else for not shooting something. So I was like, get over here and shoot something if you want something dead so bad. And he said no, so that was that. And she laid back there for probably an hour and finally got up walked away eventually she turned around and came back probably a half hour before dark and that was it that was the end of my evening i that was the only deer i saw and i did the same thing with his nick i packed up my football and went home it was it was uneventful i could have shot at some deer but you know they were both small so i wasn't about it i was letting them walk and that was the end of my New York opener. That was that was the day. And but while we were both in our stands, Tom was mm, let's call it five six hundred yards away from us, getting busy. And yeah, we heard a shot pop off right around the time I was looking at that deer laying in its bed. I was telling Nick to get over and shoot this thing, and then I we hear a shot. I'm like, oh man, stuff's really happening now. And it was our good buddy Tom. It was me. So. Me and my my good friend Frank, cousin, if you will. Um, well, I'm I'm gonna backtrack a couple years, okay? <laughs> so I had this tree stand on this little piece of property back here at home, and you're gonna tell the full length of how you got the stand you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Just making sure that's where you're heading with this. So 
And this guy, not going to throw any names out. Um, you know who you are. Had permission to walk his dogs on this property. So he's up there walking his dogs on the property. And the guy that owns the property bordering us um, kicked him off of our property. And he tried explaining that, you know, no, I, I have permission to walk my dog here. And the guy said, oh, no, you don't. You need to get off this property. Well, anyway, the guy walking his dog on his way out came across his tree stand. And he's like, well, nobody we hunts this. You can't confirm that. This is what I'm speculating. <laughs> I've got a pretty good idea. Comes across this tree stand and he goes, well, nobody hunts this property. So I guarantee you it's that guy's tree stand. So I'm going to take it because he kicked me off property I'm allowed to be on. So anyway, that was over the summer. And then first day of archery season, I'm all excited because I got this new stand up in this piece of property that nobody's ever hunted in a long time. And I'm going to go hunt it. So I go up there. and Yeah, uh, we had checked it earlier that year to make sure it was safe because it had been sitting there for so long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, no stand to be found. And just a young buck going in for your sit by yourself, you know, looking yeah. for, and of course you probably thought maybe you're in the wrong spot cause you never hunted there. It's dark. All of it. Turns out Stan was gone. So I, I don't think I hunted very long off the ground. Um, anyway, I left the woods and then as I'm leaving the woods, um, I run into the guy that had permission to walk his dog on the property. And he said, how'd your hunt go? And I said, not good. Stan was gone. He said, where is your stand? And I said, it was up at the corner here. He said, I thought that was so-and-so's stand. I said, no, that was my stand. And he's like, oh, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, it does. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> and so anyway. Well, he remember he had told, a, he told you that X has a stand on your property yeah and i said no that was my stand yeah, got so like, stolen and then it like, was like the oh oh yeah. that sucks <laughs> yeah, i can't was, believe somebody yeah would you take gotta it. throw in there that he had said that x has a stand on yeah. your property yeah so anyway two days later at my house shows up this brand new double wide big game tree stand still in the box as I'm so sorry somebody else stole your tree stand. Yeah, I just had this one laying around in the garage. <laughs> Here you go. I'm like, well, I'm totally we know okay the story. With that. So, yeah, I was totally fine with it. I actually went and hung that stand. Right I helped the, you hang it. Yeah, same exact tree that my stand was originally stolen from. Like, do you think when he, like, did that, he was like, boy, I feel stupid, but I really can't admit that I took the stand and was hoping that nobody just, everybody just went along with it? Like, like, what, what would you do in that situation? I don't know. I think he did the right thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he did, too. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I would say that, that, like, there's two right ways to handle that. You, yeah. you admit, admit it you admit and give your, the original yeah, you admit stand you're wrong. Yeah, that or the other right thing that, it's like probably ninety percent right is to just buy another tree stand. Like, <laughs> sorry about your other one that somebody yeah, else. We'll just stole. never know the story to that one, huh? Like, yeah, I guess I'll just feel bad for you. So I bought you. I mean, I had this stand in my garage that was never open that you can have. <laughs> but anyways, anyway, yeah. So I had that stand there for a few years, and then um, I quit hunting that property and brought the tree stand up to the cabin. And I had this tree stand. It was in a really good spot. Kinda. Overlooking another tree stand that one of the other guys on this property put a lot of work in. and Didn't Tom actually was hang himself. It no, was there. With no, he, I don't think he did. No, he was – somebody else had hung the stand, but he had done a lot of work there. Uh, a lot of hours and, in the stand. Yeah, yeah, put a lot of hours in scouting that area. And Tom thought it would be okay of him to move in on the action. You know, there's 116 acres, and Tom had to sit in the same quarter-acre spot. It was about, it was over 100 yards away. Nah, oof. we're not going to pull out the tape measure here, but it was close. Anyway, so I had this stand here, beautiful spot, actually. I think someone killed out of it the first time it was ever hunted. I believe so. Um, but yeah, I just got tired of hearing Nick bitching about 
how this stand oh, is that was. who had the stand that was real close yeah oh almost but forgot a little side story here um i think it was the second saturday a couple years ago frank has this spot in the swamp that he likes to hunt i think we've yeah, we've told the yeah, story. Yeah, we've told the story. Yeah, no, so, if they want to hear it, go back and listen. Yeah. Anyway, Nick's little, no stranger yeah. to impeding on other people's areas. I like to be where the deer are, and I'm going to leave it that. Yeah. So, anyway, I got tired of hearing Nick complain about having this stand too close to his. And uh, over the summer, me and Frank decided we were going to move it. So, we actually don't own the field that um, this stand overlooks, and me and Frank but you have went permission. On, yeah, we, yeah, that's it's what I'm getting on, oh. was this wild goose chase me and Frank went I, on. I couldn't believe how difficult that was. Yeah, <laughs> so we went to one house, and they said, oh, no, you got to go to this. This is where he lives. And well, we, we told there. Nick, because he was doing something up at the cabin. Well, we, I was the one on Onyx and said, hey. No, this, I was on Onyx. Oh, was it you that, yeah, yeah we got the Tom name back, and the address. Yeah, me and Tom were back in the, you know, on the edge of the field looking around like, this is about where we want it. And I was like, okay, well, this is the guy that owns it. So let's. Here's his tax address. So. Yeah. So let's go talk to him. So we're like, all right, Nick, you know, he lives, you know, literally two minutes away. We're like, we're going to run over there. We'll be back in 10. And that's what we thought was going to happen. Yeah. So we get there and they're like, oh, no, you got to go to this address. So then we get to the other address and they're like, oh, he used Isn't to Isn't that live like here, his ex wife or something? That was the second house. Yeah. Yeah. The first one, he owns the house and rents it to somebody else. Yeah. The second one was his ex wife. And he moved out, and I believe it was his son gave us the address to his the third. dad's house. But he gave us, not the address, the directions where you go up here, take a right, go down past the cemetery, second red barn on the right type thing. Yeah. Well, we went a different direction than... And you also passed a cemetery and second barn on the right. Well, it was... No, I don't, I don't know. We'll just say he gave us directions coming in to town from the north. We hooked around and came up from the south. So, yeah, it took us a minute to find it. Finally found the guy's house and gave us permission to hang the stand on the field edge overlooking his field. It's a great little spot. Um, plant corn in the field. Corn's all cut now. But a uh, little hay field down below. And I... I had sat this stand one time in the summer and saw a really big buck and a bunch of doe. I wasn't hunting, of course, just just scouting. And I hunted it a couple times in bow season, saw a bunch of deer every night. And you wouldn't think this stand is a great bow stand because you can see 400 yards across this yeah, field. Yeah, 20 acre Basically, field. Basically, yeah, watch until the field rolls over. Yeah, yeah. Um, but behind you into the woods, it's basically a funnel because the hill drops down. Like, you can't see 60 yards into the woods because that's where the hill drops down. And it's pretty steep. Obviously, the deer still use it. But they use the top of that hill or the, that flat, I guess you could call it, to work around the edge of the field without stepping out into the field so it's like a just a 60 yard strip that kind of goes along the perimeter that they they just love it so i, I have deer cruising up and down that there's, there's a word for that what the, the top of the hill like here's the top of the hill and it rolls down the crest little, the plateau whatever you want to call it yeah leave it leave it in the comments what you think <laughs> <laughs> that's called i'm drawing a blank Anyway, it's not really a crest because when I think crest, I think like it, it rolls over. You know what I mean? Well, if it like a thing that goes up and then flattens off is a plateau. Yeah. So they, they just cruise that 60-yard plateau of hardwoods right on the edge of the field. Yeah, it's great, great bow spot. Anyway, great rifle spot too. Get to that in a minute. So I see deer there every time I've ever hunted it. So I'm like, oh, might as well hunt it with a rifle and yeah. uh, put one down. So... And my girlfriend, Carly, wanted to hunt with me. So I'm like, absolutely. It's a double wide tree stand. Sure. Come on up. So I actually, I gave her permission to tell Give me. You permission. Yeah. <laughs> what I can and can't shoot. And she told me I couldn't shoot any. Her words were weenie bucks. 
So I couldn't. You can't have any weenies hanging up in camp. No, no weenie bucks. Unless it's got a big weenie. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be hanging out at Weenie Hut Juniors all yeah, exactly. the time. Exactly. So, and she said it had to be a big fat dough. That's why right. we call it Shooter's Tavern. So, though that was my stipulation. So, we get on stand 130, and not long after that, we have this doe being chased hard by a grunt and spike running right across the field. And she told me I wasn't allowed to shoot. So, I didn't even attempt to stop him. Just let him go. And not long after that, a whole herd of them came running across over the crest of the hill, literally right down to me. When I saw them, they were probably about, I don't know, 250 yards away, and they were on a beeline right at me. I think there was like seven or eight of them. Or there was a big mess of them. And as they're running, I asked Carly, I said, do you want me to shoot one? And she said, yeah, pick out the biggest one. So a lot of there were I think out of the seven or eight I would there was five or six that I would have been happy to shoot, um, and so I was on a big mature doe, following and I would try and stop her and one in the back would stop so I'd be, oh switch over to that one <laughs> and by the time I got positioned on her. She would take off running again, but the one I was originally on would stop. So then I'd swing back to that one, and it, it took a while before the one that I was on stopped while I was on it. So by that time, they were, like, right on top of us, like, within 80 yards, I'd say. Yeah. And they were facing direct, like, if I would have just let them kept running, they were going to run into my ladder. Mm -hmm. So I went, just like Nick told me, you know, center of the chest, just uh, schmookst it in off to the left because apparently the heart cants a little bit that way and just touched one off and she backpedaled a few steps and took off running about 20 yards and then I seen her legs kick up over her head and I was like, oh, she's she's done. She's done. And I knew I, I knew I made a good shot. Um, obviously, when you see their legs go up above their head, uh, it's a tough for them to run like that. Yeah, pretty good shot. I was using a six-five Creedmoor, by the way, one of the best deer rifles. I think just all around good rifle, super accurate, flat shooting, good stuff. Yeah, definitely a good gun, especially for whitetail. Yeah, hand reloads from my granddad, so. It's honestly the best shooting rifle I've ever shot. But anyway, um, I go back to camp. I I got a watch for my birthday. And I didn't want to gut this deer while wearing my watch because it gets messy. So And I didn't want to set my watch on the ground or in my book bag and lose it or get it broke. So I figured, now we'll take the 100-yard walk back up to camp. And by the time I take my watch off put it on the table and walk back down that deer should be should well be expired. expired yeah whoa what are you doing later <laughs> wild so it's unscripted folks that was an accident anyhow uh get back down there and find her all piled up right where we seen her go down and big old meat dough probably she one, was. Of, one of the biggest ones i've ever shot she's when we took the hide off her, she was covered in fat, so she hadn't been chased too hard, which was kind of odd. She was a she was you know a lot of people don't chase the fat ones. The what? Yeah, what the fat ones? That's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, it is true. Some people really do though. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so get the deer, gut it out, drug back up to camp, tag on it of course, and uh, actually back on stand by. Probably 315, 320-ish. That's not bad. No, no, it was pretty good. Um, it, I tell you what, it wasn't 20 minutes after that we started seeing deer again. Saw one doe come out into the bottom of the field and kind of loop back in. Not long after that, we had a group of three doe come out and then... Uh, Four point came out and was chasing them around the field. And then another solo doe, and then another, I think it was a spike or another four point, just a little buck came out 
And he actually came like 20 yards from us. And he was not messing around. He was ready to fight. And he would walk by, and I had Carly with me, so I just wanted to, you know, show her a thing or two. So I <laughs> broke out my grunt tube and would grunt and snort wheeze at him. And he put his ears straight back and would hard step it right basically to the base of my ladder looking for whatever for a buck fight. was challenging. Yeah, I did this like three times. And then it got pretty dark out, and I'm like, all right, when he walks away this time, we're going to let him get out of sight. And then we're going to climb out of here. So sure enough, he walks up over the hill. Can't see us anymore. So I climbed down. I didn't want to give this stand up because it's, it's, it's a, a hot spot. spot. Yeah. So climb down, get back up to camp. Um, you know, went to the tavern, had some beers, had a sandwich. Good time. Actually, uh, next morning, brought the deer back to the house. We'll we'll touch on this for a second, um, because we're <clears throat> hunting in New York. Uh, you can't bring any brain or uh, spine matter across the state line. So one thing, it's a little difficult now, um, but we're hoping to get a meat pull in to make it easier for next year. Frank but, has a tailgate, whatever you want. Meat yeah, pull. One, yeah, it's like it like goes in your out. hitch. So yeah, gantry yeah. is uh, no, that's that's for shops. Never mind. Anyway, it's so basically just it's just a hoist. You basically you we had to quarter your, it. We have yeah. to quarter it in new york and then you're allowed to, like that's legal you can bring everything back as long you as you can bring the quarters and back straps and tender ones yeah, tender which, yeah you can't bring yeah. the head in the spine which yeah we didn't yeah so yeah we just you know you have to discard that and within that state um but yeah anyway so brought i guess i should have said what was left of my deer back and uh cooked up the tenderloins for lunch today actually they were pretty good but um me and frank no help from Nick. Yeah, no help. Nick was actually sleeping. Yeah, we cut up that deer in a hurry too. Yeah. Like it was, it was done. It was quartered. So um, I mean, it's. I mean, what, got, I mean, if it was already quartered up, like how much help could I have really been? A lot. We got everything off the bone and into bags within an hour. Yeah. Sound? Would you want it done in fifty-five minutes? Fifty minutes? I mean, you never know what extra hands make light work. Extra f- hands make for more cut fingers. I didn't cut a single finger. No, me It's a good thing I wasn't there then. <laughs> Would have been plenty of cut fingers. No. Anyway, that's that's my dough story. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, and that, that pretty much wraps up our, our first day of rifle in New York. And we're all v- obviously very excited for the PA opener, which by the time you hear this will have already happened. That's, uh, that's the home opener for us. Yeah, it's going to be wild. And yeah, last week we were on the road. That was opening weekend, but yeah, I think we still won. We we got one down, so that's yeah. a win. It was an away game, and uh, we we smoked. There is but there is a difference, though. We gotta we have to count points. To and we can't opener. shoot a doe. Yeah. Home openers hit different. Uh, yeah. So speaking of home openers, Tom, you had mentioned it earlier. You got a prediction on how your morning's gonna go. We're all gonna go through this real quick. Tom, we'll start with you. Nine point eighteen inches wide, dead. Eleven forty-five. Eleven a.m. or p.m. It would be a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I you can't, hope so. Can't do it all like the guys that out by our property do it. You know? Yeah, uh, that's a jab at the asshole that <laughs> shot our biggest buck that we had on camera in the middle of the night, and cut its head off. That was in the summertime. So big screw you to that sob. Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Nobody likes poachers. I don't care if you're under 18. You're a piece of garbage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> leave it at that. Stop enabling poachers. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, Nick, what's your prediction for your first day? Uh, in my PA? prediction for my first day is I'm going to sit all day in what I like to call, what my everybody likes to call, the swamp stand. And I'm telling you, I got this feeling it's going to be a long day with not a single goddamn deer until about the last hour. And I think, honestly, it's going to be a tall time date. It's just the year for that. We've there had has two been already. a lot of tall, I think, narrow. I think bucks. we're going to get a tall time date, and he's going to bite to dust in that last hour of light. And that's going to be the only deer you see? Yeah, it's going to be the only deer I see. Hmm. It's going to be a long day, but I can't wait for it to pan out for you. Yeah, me too. Frank? Okay, so I'm, I'm having a hard time really nailing down the deer. Uh, I'm going to hunt this one spot, actually right where I killed my uh, big Pope and Young buck a few years ago. Same general area, 
and I'm either going to shoot a high and tight 8, just like you're talking, or a nice, solid, heavy 18, 19 inch 8 point. You know, just a real solid, good looking buck, right around 120 inches, solid buck. Either, so I, 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 I'm, I'm leaning towards that one rather than the high and tight 8, but we'll see. I got to ask, Frank, last year you were bringing out the pistol. What's your weapon of choice this year? This year, I'm, I just bought a 3030 not too long ago, and I'm going to rock that one. That, okay. that's I was just be my curious because I know you, you were rocking the uh, 460. Actually, I think Dad Ooh. said he's going to take out the 460 for the first day. Nice. Yeah, so hopefully Dad little, can get it done. A wee baby gun. Yeah, uh, just a little pistol. Yeah. I'll be taking a 325 short mag. Plenty, plenty of gun. <laughs> Another small baby gun. <laughs> I'm gonna be rocking that seven mm ammo eight. Uh, See, I might have rocked that gun if I could find ammo for it. But if we are in quite the ammo crisis right now. I did find some thirty thirty ammo today from uh, Jared. I got some from him. But uh, literally I, every store I've tried calling Cabela's. I can and, uh, yeah. check my grandpa May just because my grandpa like have what thirty thirty or seven oh eight. Oh, I know I've got seven oh eight. Yeah. Um. But my grandpa might have thirty thirty. Okay. Yeah, if you can, if you can get my hands on a box, I'd be, I'd be, I'd appreciate. He might have reloaded them. But I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, he just does a good job. Yeah, yeah. I prefer my grandpa's reloads over any store box. So do I. That's all yeah. I use. It's good stuff. So that about wraps it up. Then you know we're we're all very excited. I'm sure all you guys are very excited for the opening day of P, uh, PA rifle. And when this releases, you'll actually be able to hunt that day. Yeah, you'll be hunting Sunday, which I want to talk about that a little bit more at length next week. Okay. So if maybe, you guys have anything you want to throw input. in, yeah. Yeah. If you guys want have... us to talk about anything, you know, if you guys have any input on what your thoughts are. Leave on, it in the comments. Yeah, yeah leave, let us know. Actually, yeah, we could do a little fan call maybe. I think I know how to do that now, where we could just like have some fans ring in, uh, tell us what they thought about opening day and what that Sunday hunting did for them. That'd be sweet. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, Good luck to everybody that's going out in the woods. Stay safe and make sure you guys are all getting outside.